Welcome to TGIF. It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready for this hot tea. Real quick, I'm looking at the chat. Y'all know we got people watching from South, South America. Wow. St. Lucia. Hey, in the chat, shout out what country you're in if you're in a different country or what state you're in. Go ahead. I want to I like see who we got watching us. Uh, please welcome Al Reynolds and Funky Donnie. But what's up, fellas? Going on, Claudia. What's Cute. going on? What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Happy Monday. Oh, uh, is that a muscle? <laughs> it's a whole bunch of them. Go back to my single shot. Go back to my single shot. Oh, production. my God. It's a whole bunch of them. It's Wait a, a whole minute. bunch of Look at this. Ow. Oh, so Dude. now we... <laughs> Now we wearing um, muscle shirts tops. and, and oh, when I get tank a, tops. we wearing tank tops to work today, Claudia. He dressing like me. Trying to dress like me. This is, like a, me. This is a Versace mesh mm. cotton blend. Don't mm, yeah. mm. I went shopping this weekend. <laughs> is there a hater on the line? <laughs> you know, one day we should do the show all in workout attire. I think that'd be cute. We should start doing themes every now and then. I think it'd be kind of fun to dress up sometimes. Hey, some of the places that are checking in, let me just go go and read Canada. We got, okay, Michigan. Y'all gonna give me your states, but okay. Brooklyn, Jamaica, Detroit, California. Uh, uh, Lauren Oliver says, Olivia says, I'm in the country of North Florida. <laughs> okay. We got Trinidad and Tobago. Oak Cliff, Texas. What's good? Oh, um, all right. We got people from all over. Ethiopia. Breezy oh, from wow. Ethiopia. Well, shouts out to all of our oh, international cool. followers. Like, that's... Max, that, makes me, that makes me feel good. Max him from Paris, France. Bryce, Puerto Rico. We got okay. everybody in here. Uh, wow. A lot of from the, uh, the Antigua. Okay, Jamaica. Ms. Knowles Jamaica. from Nassau, Bahamas. Wow, this is super now dope. From Michigan. Super dope, Mississippi. Okay. We're from all over. We worldwide, baby. We okay, are okay, okay. Uh, uh, uh. And to our Jamaican brothers and sisters, I'll be out there this weekend celebrating a friend's birthday. We're gonna be in the grill. And so hit me up if you know anything hot that's going on this weekend in Jamaica. All right, are we hey, drinking um, tonight? Hmm? What do you say? In the streets. I do. Well, you know, you got, I, I swear you've got to be a high-end call girl because you are just <laughs> literally on a plane every weekend somewhere. Now, uh, we all make relatively the same amount of money. So where are you getting all this money from to be traveling <laughs> all over the world? No, we don't. <laughs> I do a lot of stuff outside of this show. So there, there's that. I told y'all I'm way too lazy to be a whore. <laughs> I got the flight pass. I got a whole bunch of, I got, I got my ways of, of doing, plus I work, I, I, I will say this, all jokes aside, when I turned 50 and I was like, okay, that's pretty much closes the door on having kids and all that. I said, my life and my fun was going to be my kids. So whatever I wanted to do, like this, this would be, you know, a month of childcare probably, you, you know what I'm saying? That makes sense. A $10,000 door. A, a $10,000 door is, is my kid's bracelet. Truck. And you get a door. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to get the cars I want. I'm going to get the, the, the Cuban links I want. And I'm going to have the experiences I want. Because I still dress cheap. Right. My clothes are cheap, but my jewelry, my cars are not. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. That's a good way to look yeah. at things. But uh, yeah, if I was a call girl, though, Funky, I would not be fucking working with y'all. <laughs> I, would be, I would be kept. She said, not me, girl. I, would be, I wouldn't be going to work. I, you know. I had to do that. All right. Oh, see, now you got them thinking I'm getting flued out. Thank you, Funky. <laughs> like, I don't have enough goddamn rumors about myself. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Let's get into some topic. Now, we have, a, I've been dying to hear what y'all have to say about this. We have an update on the Carly Russell story. A press conference took place earlier today, and Carly's attorney, who I feel so bad for, released the following statement. Take a look. There was no kidnapping. My client did not see a baby on the side of the road. My client did not leave the Hoover area. My client apologizes for her actions to this community. Carly, again, ask for your forgiveness and prayers. All right, what are your thoughts on this? And do you feel bad for that? That's got to be so embarrassing. Al, what do you think about this? You know, I, I, what would have been better for me is if she did this statement herself. 
I'm glad that someone did speak into the space about it all being a hoax. But if she really wanted to recover from this quicker, we didn't need to, we needed to hear it come out of her mouth. We're a very forgiving society, but only if you do it the right way. Because right now we're still gonna play you. We're still gonna make jokes about you. We're still gonna have memes about you. But if had you come forward and gave a public an apology, we could have turned the page a little bit faster. You think people would have? Do you think it still would have been like people would have forgiven her? Because don't, don't people apologize? People just, be like, so what? We don't care. We don't <laughs> I make just our feel like, about you. I feel like if she came on and said, you know, I I I just fucked up, or I did something wrong, or I did it for the wrong reasons. I apologize for all of the distress that I caused the community and, and my family. Then it becomes more personable, right? And then we can make a more informed decision on whether or not and when we want to forgive her and turn the page. Rico says, girl, you ain't getting no more prayers from us. Funky, do you share that sentiment? How do you feel about this? Oh, I 100% agree. I'm not praying for that health, but the only thing I'm praying is that they take her ass to jail. Okay? <laughs> she needs to go to jail. And that, that's just all to it. This new generation, y'all have figured out ways to get away with shit and then blame it on mental illness or ADHD or stress or cyberbullying. And y'all have found ways to lean into that to evade accountability. And it's time that we, our generation, we dial some of that privilege back. You need to go to jail. All right. Like what you did was an outright crime. You need to go to jail and you need to pay restitution. And if for no other reason than for her crimes to deter other people from doing this stupid shit. But I got a question for y'all. She had no idea of knowing that this would have gotten this large. Do you think that she possibly did it with the intention of just getting the attention of her family or whatever, man, and, then, and, then it, and then it grew. It sounded like something in her relationship. Oh, and man. Then it, it, yeah, and then, it, and it, then just by chance, it grew larger. Um, but yeah. You know, and I, I understand all too well about being heartbroken and the thoughts that go through your mind. Because I ain't gonna lie, there was someone that broke my heart one time and I was really considering doing something illegal, okay? I considered, um, what do they call that? Uh, when they took the kneecaps out, the skater. Uh, uh, hit, hit man, hire for hit. What, what was the uh, the skater that? It's Tanya Harding. And Tanya, then, I, I, yeah. Let me. I, I even planned it out. I, I was about to get my flight, fly down to his train. I, I, I had the whole plan. My cousin had a talk me at the legend. Was like Claudia, snap out of it. You know, where are her friends? Where is your like? Where's that little voice that says I probably shouldn't do this? I get. I can totally empathize with someone going through something and not knowing how to oh, I'm grasp. I feel like I'm losing everything. I'm free falling. But there's got to be a, a check. There's got to be someone there or something. A voice that says, "Wait, hold up." You know what I mean? Like I'm not saying that she was wrong to have crazy feelings, but acting upon them. You know, and I feel like ever since we got overly sensitive and giving all these participation trophies out to everybody and everything's an excuse and ism of a mental health or this or that, we give people um, uh, alibis and reasons and excuses, right? I remember back in our day, we're, you know, we're 10 years apart, Q, but outside right, of that, right. we're the same generation, right? right? Our parents were not going for that. Our relatives oh. were not, they was fucking you up. They were spanking you. They were withdrawing things from you. They were, there was consequences. I think now maybe there's a correlation with this gentle trying to be your kid's friend. I don't know what the parent relationship is, but people are just acting so crazy stuff that we would never consider doing in our life. Like never, oh, except that one time I had my moment. But I'm just saying, it just seems so common. And Claudia too, speaking about the parenting really quickly, her mama owe us an apology too, because that mama got her ass on what was it, uh, one of the, the popular morning shows and read us the riot act. And how dare you guys, you know, you guys are out there further traumatizing my daughter, saying this was a hoax. My daughter was kidnapped, this, that, and the third. And I'm not mad with a parent for siding with their child, but you read us. And so we need you to use that same energy and we need you to acknowledge that your daughter is a lion ass heifer and apologize for coming at us with that energy, mom. It's sad that our mother really believed it. She probably feels stupid too. You know what I mean? That's embarrassing. We have some comments. Safine E said, just for that man to gain 30,000 followers overnight, all she did was give him a platform to be worse. That's true. And it's, it, 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 my dad said, y'all don't give the same energy to Kelly Price. She was on the national missing list and watched people look for her. Yes, we kind of did. We, 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 I we, say we, Rhea Kelly. Yeah, what are you talking about? Trying we to didn't put her in jail, though. 
We didn't put her in jail, but we did yeah. we did ride her neck. Uh, Dana Morris says, not apologizing through the attorney. She used our GoFundMe money to hire. Wrong way. Apology not accepted. And then Miss LEC28 says, she needs help. If she were white, we would be talking about mental health and praying. Yeah. Well, you know, with I think we're a little more sensitive because Black women missing and not getting any attention is a sore subject in the Black community. One person who finally did give us what we've been asking for. It took a little while, but you know what? We're happy. This was a happy ending. Jamie Foxx recently addressed his fans after a health scare that had us all on the edge of our seats. He took to uh, social media and released this. Take a look. Now, you know, by being quiet, sometimes things, you know, get out of hand. People saying what I got. Some people said I was I was blind. But as you can see, uh, as you can see, the eyes are working. The eyes are working just fine. Uh, I said I was paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed. Uh, but I did go through, I went to hell and back. Are you guys excited about this? How do you feel about this? Uh, Q, what do you think about this? I'm most definitely excited overall that he's alive, well, thriving, so on and so forth. I'm not going to lie, I still got a little bit of attitude. Um, you sat here and acknowledged, even in being quiet, some things got out of hand. So then why did you continue to be quiet? You know what I'm saying? And then I just find a little peculiar that your statement kind of coincided with the release of They Clone Tyrone on Netflix. Um, it just feels a little opportunistic to me. Um, and again, I can't tell somebody when to speak out, but I think it would have just done the public a world of good had Jamie spoke out a little sooner but praise the lord that the brother's good alive we can put this behind us um he uh definitely looks like he lost a lot of weight uh in whatever he was going through <laughs> i do think we will never be happy that we'll say that right you know what i mean like we just said with carly would have said something we'd be happy and then jamie similar then she said something but i do feel you because we were really taking this personally al what are your thoughts on this you know, one of the things that I'm glad he did was debunk this whole COVID vaccine conspiracy. And he he said clearly that he's, he was not blind and he was not paralyzed. That was one of the things that really concerned me because a lot of us, especially in the African-American community, took the COVID vaccination and were really leaning in on this concept that maybe it would have some type of negative effect on our health at some point. So I'm really glad he did that. I'm also glad that he uh, debunked the cloning Conspiracy. I never thought about what Q just shared, which was the timing with um, Tyrone. I, that was interesting, Q. I, I, I never saw or thought about that. But overall, overall, even though the rollout wasn't what I would expect from him, um, we are. I am super excited that he's healthy, that he's back on his uh, speedy recovery, and soon he'll be back on the big screen. Did y'all think like, and I don't know if y'all had this thought when you saw him, like I thought while well, all this time while he was silent, it must have been really, really severe, right? So then when I saw him, I was like, I expected to be, to see something like a little off, you know what I mean? Like, I, that's what I thought. I'm glad that he's not, but it made me wonder like, how long has he been in this shape? Um, could he have spoken to us sooner? I do think it's tacky. If I was still in his circle, like I used to, I would say, yo, bruh. Just address the health and we could talk about the movie later. Like I, I just, or the show, I, I think it's just, right. it does, it doesn't help the conspiracy theorists out there. And I don't want people to think this was a conspiracy theory. I do still care about you and I hope you're okay. But I just think that wasn't a great, um, it didn't help. But it I'm glad to see him talking to him himself, his, talking to us himself. Go ahead. Right. You know, didn't he look, did he, did he look a little bit embarrassed? He was emotional. It's emotional. It looked like it was hard for him to do. It it, 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 it had a scent of embarrassing or embarrassed to me. And I'm not sure, but I think that's kind of how I read it. So maybe he took some time because he didn't really know how to address it. He, maybe sure. he was, you know, embarrassed for if he had to explain how he got in that state. So, and, you know, being in the public eye and he's in the public eye 10 times larger than any of us, it could have it could have an effect on how you normally would handle stuff. TSB Malik says, Claudia, get over it. I'm not going to get over it. Jamie and I spent well over t like 10 years, of 13 years of being friends. And I worked on a show sometimes for free for a little, long time. And, and we had a really close friendship. Like I felt like I was a family member. So if someone I care about 
is is out of commission. I can't reach him. I don't know. I, I feel what the public feels times 10. So no, I have every right to feel the way I feel. And I'm going to continue speaking on how I feel. And that's why you tune in. Coming up next, we are covering all things dusty and musty in Florida. And later, did a woman fake winning the lottery? Oh my God, this lady here. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to more TGIF. All right, whether good, bad, or ugly, or just plain dumb, the tea is always overflowing with crazy news stories out of the state of Florida. And that's why we're giving you the 411 in What the Florida. All right, in Florida news, according to the 2023 social studies curriculum, apparently there will be lessons on how slavery developed skills that could be used for personal benefits. Funky, what say you? You know, y'all, I ain't even gonna play with this one. I don't even have an excuse for DeSantis and what these people are down here doing. And it's just so funny because this is gaslighting at its finest, right? I, I just love the, the way people are so crafty with language, right? Because it, taken out of the context of slavery, this could be a true statement. You know what I'm saying? If you remove the context of slavery, this could be a true statement. People brought over here, they did develop skills, vocational skills, so on and so forth. But bitch, against their will, we didn't ask for these skills. We were skilled at what the fuck we was doing, where the fuck we was at. All right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Tell the whole story. So, you know, this is just another one of those ways that these people are attempting to play in our faces. And, and unfortunately, even if we teach our children the correct history, which I'm sure most of us will do, it sucks because they have to go out in the world and now deal with their white and other counterparts who are misinformed. And it's going to cause all type of social discord if this is allowed to continue. So I, I have no excuse for this. Shame on Florida. I'm embarrassed to even say I live here at this point based on this story. You know, it's a bad story when Q has no defense because he was defending <laughs> squirrels and sharks <laughs> and all kinds of animals and everything that... I'm going to say this. You know, it's funny that slavery always gets put on... Like, we always talk about Black folks and how we complain about it, but we never talk about the white folks part in this, right? Yeah, we may have learned some skills, I guess I'm trying to say. Let's talk about what white people learn from this. They Generational learned, wealth. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Generational what's that? wealth off our back. Uh, yeah, let's talk about what they benefit from. Their kids, 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 kids have, have real estate in this country and, and, and huge wealth because of it, a huge head start amongst uh, above black people. Till this day, hundreds of years later, they have learned that they can get away with anything with us. They have learned how to divide and conquer us. That still works to this day. We're still doing that bullshit ourselves. They've learned. What about the stuff that they that they passed down? And I know it's a little bit off topic, but it's just like it, it just it just mind boggles me. Like we always have to take the negatives of all of it, right? And where is the accountability and the responsibility on them? And I guess that's why they don't want to teach anything. They want nothing to be said about what they did. They want to act like they did us a goddamn favor for raping our great 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 grandparents, raping men in front of their wives, buck breaking them cutting babies out of stomachs, feeding people of sharks and to alligators, you know, but we complain too much. Al, what do you think about this before we go on to the next jam out of Florida? I'm just, uh, you know, one thing that I was super excited was what uh, our Vice President Kamala Harris stepped into the, to the narrative and put her two cents in. She says she's headed to Florida to fight back. And she says that she condemns the curriculum. And I'm hoping that her trip to Florida will straighten some things out there in Jacksonville, right, Q? Jacksonville is where your legislative halls are. So Tell let's- Tallahassee. Tallahassee. Well, I yeah, think she says, why is she going to Jacksonville then? I think she says she's going to Jacksonville. Okay. But wherever it is that she's going, hopefully she can step into this space and create a voice for her as a vice president in turning this shit around in the state of Florida. I posted her speech and I thought it was brilliant. And then people were still complaining, oh, where have you been? First of all, she's been doing a lot of stuff, but vice president's job would not to be front and center. But I'm glad she decided to take yep. this by the horns. And she, there was no one better to say it, what she said than her. All right, experts are saying that sharks may have ingested pounds of that coca, that cocaine that were left in the water by drug smugglers attempting to transport the product to the US. Damn, not a shark shark coke too. What are your thoughts on these cocaine sharks? And damn, okay, cute. Florida people, Florida people. This why it's a drought in the damn streets and down to the damn club, because <laughs> the marine life, 
Don't, don't, don't ask me how I know, but the people say the coke out here now ain't no good, y'all. They say it's, <laughs> they say it's clumpy. They say they say it got fit and all in it. It says it's a shortage. Okay, flipper and goddamn baby shark down there doing it. You know this 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 this, this is sad. I, I had to read into this story a little more, and it's just so funny because I didn't realize the impact that producing cocaine has on Colombia as far as deforestation, the pillaging and plundering of villages just for people to over here in the States to be able to do it recreationally. And then it's like, y'all not even getting it to the damn people. Y'all are feeding it to the sharks. And maybe, Claudia, this is why them bears and sharks is showing up on the damn shores. Uh -huh. See, I played that bear on on uh, up north, and I got to take that back. See, the facts is coming out now. The bear got a hold of some of that cocaine and that water. Oh, that's okay. that's that's why he was over there bothering with those people. Just recently, last week down here, there was a family of hammerhead sharks flying around in the the surf with the children and stuff. Play, they was on drugs. So it's not because they're badass Florida sharks; it's because they were on cocaine. They were on drugs, and they they got substance abuse issue. And we need to take this really serious because you know it's growing exponentially in the community of humans, and now it's gonna trickle down to the animals. And this is what Kamala need to be speaking on next while she down here in Florida. Kamala, you better not talk about cocaine in the water. You better stay away from that topic. I <laughs> don't think about this and your friend defending this. I don't know. You know, giving cocaine to sharks is is similar to giving a cat catnip. Do you do you use catnip, Claudia? Yeah, we do. My cats love it. They be rolling all in it. <laughs> you like making them all sexual and stuff. Yeah, so you know, I, this is interesting. You guys, I don't know if you guys watch Shark Week on Discovery. Yes, it's on tonight. Uh, right, it's on tonight. So they're doing a special specifically about the cocaine shark. So everyone, if you're really interested in knowing the effects and how it happened, be sure to watch that on Discovery. And also, I think, you know, the cocaine bear is a movie. I think they should do a sequel and do the cocaine shark. Uh, Jack A said, Jacksonville's where our military is. And uh, they're all talking about cocaine and the shark. Okay. All right, y'all. All right, a Florida couple has been charged and arrested for sex trafficking after they allegedly bonded women out of jail and forced them into prostitution. Joselito Martinez and Tanya Worsher provided the women with a place to live and then forced them allegedly to engage in commercial sex acts with customers. Florida, Florida, Florida. Uh, real quick, the couple racked up more than $300,000 from the victims over two years. Um, I'm going to let Al talk about this first, and then fucking I'm going to try to defend this. <laughs> let fucking defend it later. You guys know that I worked at a sex trafficking organization based out of Florida. This is called debt bondage. So debt bondage is when someone will come and get you out of, out of jail. Usually it's women that have already been arrested for prostitution, right? They come, they get them out of jail, and if they don't sex work for them, then they will have their bond rescinded, which means they will go back into jail. This is a five, a $9.5 billion U.S. commercial sex industry concept that's been going on for a long time. And what we do know is that bail bond system is being used to sex traffic in five specific states. Good old Florida, <laughs> good old Texas, Ohio, North Carolina, and Mississippi. So this is something that's been going on for a long time. And hey, it's very, very profitable. That's so sad. You get all excited, like, oh my God, somebody bailed me out. And then you go from like out of the frying pan into the fire. Right. You know? I don't know if they should let people that don't know you bail you out like that. Mm -hmm. I, I could see that being a very easy way to do it. But it's bail bondsman. Oh, it's the bondsman. The bondsman, right? The middleman. So, right. <laughs> Uh, Tangie Clean says uh, the Epstein effect. Yeah, for sure. All right, coming up next, did an alleged lottery winner pull a Carly Russell? And later, is it appropriate to go through your spouse's phone? Think about that. We'll be back with the answers after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Al, we have a comment for you here, and I think this will be kind of funny. Maybe we can have some oh. kind of contest and they can guess. Uh, let's see. Lola Andretti said, can someone get a list of all Al's jobs? Mm -hmm. Maybe soulmates, you can guess, and the closest number to it gets, I don't know, something, <laughs> autograph type, something, or something. They want to know how many jobs. So think about that. Maybe put that together, and we can see if they gotcha. can get close. Okay. 6,200 in the chat right now. 
All right. Hey, welcome, y'all. Shout out to the soulmates. All right, y'all. Are you craving fresh, delicious, easy meals this summer? Well, Wild Grain. Try Wild Grain and get their baked from frozen sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries delivered right to your door. Wild Grain is the first ever baked from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Unlike typical supermarket bread, Wild Grain uses a slow fermentation process that's easier on your belly, lower in sugar, and rich in nutrients and antioxidants. Now, for every item, uh, it bakes from frozen to 25 minutes. It, it fro- from baked from frozen 25 minutes or less. You'll never run into the risk of getting bored with Wild Grain. They're constantly adding new seasonal and limited time specials items to try. Now, plus, for every new member, Wild Grain donates six meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank so you can eat good and do good all at the same time. All you have to do is sign up at wildgrain.com slash T and t- choose what type of box you want to receive and how often. It's easy to reschedule, skip, or cancel. Plus, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash T to start your subscription. Yeah, you heard me. Free croissants in every box. And $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash T. That's wildgrain.com slash T or use promo code T at checkout. Are you fellas, gentlemen, enjoying your wild grain? Q, or are you on a diet because we're working out? No, 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 no. You know, the beautiful thing about me, because my ball, my back is small, petite, and demure, I, I'm not, I don't have no wide bite, is that I can eat whatever I want in an effort to get these, mu- ooh, to get these muscles real fine. So I have devoured all of my wild grain bread, guys. It, it's really good. Y'all know I'm a Southerner. I love bread with my meals. Actually kind of mad that I don't have any in there now. The bread is good. The pasta is good. The desserts are good. The croissants are excellent. They're the size of my head. Y'all hear us talk about this all the time because it is good. I would encourage you guys to get you some wild grain, especially with fall coming up and you get cool, the soups and all that good stuff. Get your wild grain. All right, Ronnie Joanne in the po- in the in the chat says Q loves the croissants. Yes, I do. They pay attention. All right, promotional considerations furnished by Wild Grain. Let's get back to some more topics. All right, people on social media are believing a woman in Los Angeles pulled a Carly Russell after claiming to have hit the Powerball jackpot. Take a look. Hey, wait a second. Hang on. We uh, honey, I can't. I'm scared. I'm scared. Are you sure? Are you sure? Get a bodyguard. Get a bodyguard. Get a bodyguard. Get a bodyguard. Hey. No, yeah, we will. think this is the person. No. We think this is the person. One person wrote, Carly, is that you again? And another person wrote, Jesse crawled so Carly could walk. Carly walked so this crazy chick could run. Well, I know we talk about this shit all the time, just people doing anything for attention and clouts, but it's got to stop. Right, Al? I agree. I agree. Um, you know, Black women, <laughs> y'all have had a terrible July. <laughs> I swear to God. With Carly Mommy, Russell, girl. <laughs> with Carly Russell, and then this trans situation. Now we have the black woman line about winning the Powerball. Well, the store owner said he's never seen the woman before, so we knew it was an act. Like once he was interviewed, and then you know the store owner's family has been speaking on this too. The sad part is, was I the only one that really wanted a black person to win that gazillion dollars? <laughs> no, I was like, what? Was what if they won the billion? It. Yeah, yeah. Q, what that do you think about this? He too pathetic to even drag. Like, like I, I, I could think of 17 ways to drag her past Sunday right now, but this is just pathetic and lame as hell. She should be thrown in jail. I just don't, you want it to be on TV. Like, now what? Like, are you sitting at home with your homegirls now? Like, girl, look, that's me. Girl, I, I did that. Like, what gratification did you get out of this like i like i i almost feel like she should reap all the negative consequences that the karens get the loss of job and the, the, the being banned from the community like this is bogus mess with the news she should be in jail alongside carly you know, attention clout social media likes and that kind of fake stature that is it's going to be the death of us. 
Like our society is going down the drain. And it's not just, it used to be people on reality shows that, that were just doing this goofy shit. Now it's just everybody, regular old nine to five chick is so moved by attention, right? That she does this. It reminds me of people that go do reality shows for free and go like act a fool and get into a fight. It's like, and now what? I always admire the ones that go with a plan. Like, okay, I'm gonna go get attention and it's gonna funnel, it's gonna increase my business sales or it's gonna means to an end. Like you said, now what? Okay, so now for five minutes, we thought it might have been you. We're going to find out really quickly with this the news cycle, right? Now we know it's not you. Now you look like a dumbass, a jackass. No one's going to take you seriously. Your friends are going to probably be embarrassed to know you. You embarrass your family. And now what? What is the, what's the end play game? Are you trying to manifest a lottery win? It doesn't work like that, boo. And Claudia, too, uh, let, let's let, let's be clear, because I think, too, it, it, we live in a generation now where words are taking on different meanings and taking out different contexts. When you gain clout, you you gain something, right? Like, so this is not even clout. You know, we, we've let the term clout chasing distort what clout means. Clout is actually a good thing when you possess it or when you're able to obtain it. Clout is currency. You got nothing. So that's not even clout. That's a attention chasing. You yeah. got nothing. To your point, Claudia, had the back of her shirt said 1-800-MARY-MAIDS or right. whatever her business was, then I could have sat back and said, this was genius, and she gained clout. You didn't gain anything. It, it's like an uh, unforced error on your life, right? Because now that's what you're known as. That's what you're known as. An idiot. I don't even know her name. I know her face. Uh, Antonia said that can be dangerous for, for, for real talk. Get your butt robbed when they find out you're really broke. And Darius Daniel said, but props to the cameraman for following her like a pro on the Maury show. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Keep it locked because coming up next, Larsa Pippen gets candid about going through her spouse's phone. And later, Young Miami shares her thoughts on Carly Russell. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Real quick, I still see this. Some people that don't know when our show comes on, and I do see this in the replay. I, I'm in the chat a lot. And yeah, I'd be like, I finally caught a live. When's this show come on? It is 5 p.m. on the West Coast, 7 p.m. Central, and 8 o'clock on the East Coast. And it's been like that for almost three years. <laughs> please tell your friends. Please, please, please. All right, let's get into this Larsa Pippen tea now. She uh, revealed on her recent podcast with her baby boo, Marcus Jordan, that she doesn't mind going through his phone. Larsa said, I feel like if you really want to know what someone's up about or not or on, you kind of got to go through their phone. Do you agree? And uh, have you ever allowed your mate or an ex to go through your phone? Ch uh, soulmates, I want you to chime in on this one. Um, Al, what, what do you, what, how do you feel about your partner going through your phone, going through their phone? Hey, I'm, I'm a big believer of that saying, if you go looking for trouble, it will come find you. I feel like relationships should be built on trust and honesty. And if you have to look through their phone and go through their, their emails, then those are the two things that you're lacking in your relationship. I will have to say though, Marcus did give her permission to go through his phone in this case. But in all honesty, the way this whole couple's un, unveiling or coming out, I, I really don't see them together very long. I give them two years max. Okay. All right. All right. Q. This is a complete no-go for me. Um, and if ever I was in a situation or about to enter a situation and somebody remotely implied that they were interested in doing something like that to me, I would instantly get up from the table and never speak to them again. I am a firm believer in, in privacy. And it's not even about me cheating or whatever. There may be, I might be talking about my best friend to another damn best friend, ripping their ass a new one, and it's none of your damn business. I might be texting a financial deal with my agent, and it's none of my your damn business. I might be talking, talking to my aunt about another family member that's on drugs, and it's none of your damn business. I think that, you know, people are allowed to have private moments, private thoughts, independent of their loved one. And this is just a complete violation for me and a total no-no. I agree. And I think, uh, I do think if you volunteer it and you're like so comfortable, like if maybe you're married to the person, you're like, hey, babe, use my phone and call such and such. To me, that's, that's all the trust I would need. I'd be like, wow, you trust me. And, and that would make me not want to go through your phone because you are acting like that. Now, if you're moving funny, I get it. 
But like, I do agree about having some personal moments. I, I, I recently I'm dealing with something in my little friend circle out here. Well, I'm not friends with one of them. Um, you know, with someone screenshotting something from a conversation, not showing their part in the conversation and then framing it the way they like to frame it. Right. So that's, uh, that's the, that's something I think about when someone goes to your phone, like how it can be taken out of context. If you don't know the backstory of the relationship with that person, there's so much that can be taken out of context. I would prefer if I felt comfortable and they felt comfortable, you know, not, but if you want to let someone use your phone, but going through the phone, like yeah. it's, it's too, it leaves it, it leaves you too open to misinterpretation. Yeah. All right. Social media went into an uproar after a transgender woman expressed that it's transphobic to attach menstruation and womanhood only to biologically cis women. Check this out. The, the arrogance for cis women to believe that they own periods, that they own womanhood. You don't. Okay. You don't own periods. You don't own womanhood. You experience both. And both are different for every person. But as a cis woman, it doesn't belong to you. All right. What are your thoughts, Al? I don't really have a lot of thought on, on this one, Claudia. I feel like I'm trying to learn and I'm trying to respect trans women, trans rights, trans men. Um, but I, I'm disconnected on this. I'm going to have to pass to you because I, I, I really am not understanding the argument. I, I feel like... The definition of a trans woman is a woman who was assigned male at birth, right? Like I'm Yeah. Help me out, cue somebody. I need help on this one. I, I just don't know. Q, what are your thoughts? I really can't help much because I'm gonna be honest with you. Um and, and I really don't want no parts of this conversation. Um this week has been very tense in the, you know, the, the tensions between cis women and trans women. And it was just very emotionally draining for me being on the fringe of what is going on and what is being said. It's a lot. And the, the sad part or, or, or the only conclusion that, that I've been able to draw this weekend is that I think tempers and, and, Tempers on both sides of the aisle need to cool down for a moment. Now, if I have to speak directly to what this young lady is saying, um, they do own the rights to period, sweetie. Um, and I don't even think that that's something that most women are bragging about. They, that's, I saw a lot. I saw Tammy Rivera put in the comments, girl, if y'all want to have periods, y'all can have them or whatever. Um, if they own the rights to womanhood, you know, that's, debatable depending on your interpretation of womanhood do you believe it's a, an innate birth I, I innate, an innate birth thing or do you think the act of womanhood is a social construct it depends on your and th this is where the waters get muddy for me i'm just backing out of it i'm gonna mind my gay african-american business because it really has nothing to do with me and i am too exhausted trying to be in the mix of something that i I ain't got a dog in the fight. I was listening. I was in some um, Twitter spaces. I was reading as many comments as I could. I was trying to look at all the videos. Um, of course, I'm a friend of T.S. Madison's. I don't know this other transgender woman that was speaking. I did look at, I did see a comment and um, a breakdown from Hope Giselle. Hope and I have had some conversations because there was some issues back in the day and she was educating me in my DMs and we got into it, but then it ended up being calm. And what I did to offer a solution was look, don't fault me for not knowing all the lingo. Y'all don't even know the lingo. It's still developing. I invited three transgender women on my show in Dallas, a very conservative state. And we gave them a voice for four hours. And it was amazing on both sides. Um, hope you blocked me. I guess you don't like some of my takes. That's fine. I'm gonna give you your props. I think you, you verbalize it better than anyone I've seen online. She said, you know what, as a transgender woman, I can't speak on that. Those are, we don't have periods. We don't have uteruses. And this is, you got to let natural born women have that. Cisgender, however she rephrased, rephrased us, uh, referred to us. And I appreciated that. I appreciated that. I don't want my period either. This shit is, is annoying. 
And it's just, I feel like at this point, we're splitting hairs. We're getting to a point where everyone's just getting so angry at things that we don't need to get angry at because it's kind of ridiculous. You're a transgender woman. You are not the same as a natural born woman. And that's why we say the word transgender in before, before it. T.S. Mass and I had many conversations about this, and I loved our conversations. She said, I know who I am and what I am. I've taken, I've taken from here and there, and this is how I feel. But she goes, I know I'll never be a woman in the, you know, a natural born woman or whatever the word was we used. It's so confusing where women's offensive now. How the fuck did the term woman get offensive? Why can't we define it anymore? It's getting weird around here, y'all. It's getting weird. And it's getting to a point where it makes women like me be afraid to voice my real feelings about things because how people want to just jump on every single word and you can't even have a real honest conversation anymore. And I'm sick of it. I, have I will say this, transgender women, we as black women, I think I must be, say this one thing. I think I feel some of us feel like a little betrayed by what this particular one said, not all. Because like I said, I love what Hope Giselle said. I love what T.S. Madison said. Because we, I feel like we've been the most supportive, right? And it's just like, why are we fighting with each other? Like, we, are, we, we should not be fighting. We should actually be on the same side. And I, I, don't, I don't like where it's going. But I, I do, I, the only thing I can speak of is we do own it. And it's nothing to want. Trust me. It's nothing to want. And we are all learning and trying to be respectful. But in, the, in, the, in, in our journey of us being respectful to the trans community, please give some back. It should be mutual, you guys. And it's not, it has not been mutual the last few days. It has been horrible. I've been hating what I've been seeing online from both sides, honestly. From both sides. It's been fucked up. And while the men are sitting by watching and like, look at these motherfuckers fighting. We told y'all not to accept them. And black women are like, no, but we, I've seen so many different fights and, and arguments and it's been terrible. But you don't own periods. You don't own motherhood. You don't own that. Periods, I understand what the argument is that uh, trans men have, some have periods still that, that are not taking enough the hormones that make their periods stop. So I get that argument. So they should be included. But why are we fighting about periods? Go ahead, Q, you want to say something else? Yeah, I was going to say, well, well, two things. I think, I think it would be worth it one day if we dedicated an entire show to this, have a professor of gender studies on, have trans people on, maybe even me and Al back out of the conversation, have another woman on, because this is a hot button topic that's going on right now. Right? But uh, th there was a question, uh, and I'm approaching this from the way I deal with these racist people sometimes. I try to live in a space where I always protect my mental peace. And the question that I have for you, Claudia, and a lot of black women out there who are so upset i would just be curious to know when you really sit down and you analyze what you're upset about I, i'm just curious to know what you're truly upset about because when it's all said and done and i may be wrong i don't think you guys have lost any rights any liberties i don't think that your life your day-to-day -day life has changed in any way that's tangible or quantifiable by this discourse. I may be wrong, but I don't think on a day-to-day -day basis, y'all are running into issues with dicks in your bathroom. I don't think, you know, I don't think any of y'all have gone to the gynecologist and anybody has referred to your thing as a bonus hole. I don't think that a lot of these things that we're getting so upset about are actually happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And I don't know, hence why I'm asking. It's actually kind of what you said, right? It's kind of ironic. It's men, mansplaining to, to, to women how we should feel. Mm -hmm. You're telling us we haven't lost anything. You don't know that. I'm asking. I, you're I'm, 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 I'm asking. I remember when I was on a reality show with KJ, I had several, and people were mad at something I said, I had several trans women in my thing telling me they're going to take my man from me and, and I could fuck him better than you. Now that does not, that is not a reflection on the entire community. And I don't actually think I'm losing anything from a transgender woman. I, I happen to actually love my trans. I have a couple of transgender women that are my friends. I love them for them. I, 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 I hate to do this with race, but I think it's the only way I can try to make people feel how some women might be feeling. Okay. And I know I'm gonna get dragged for this. So I'm going in, I'm not gonna look at my comments the next few days. When Rachel Dolezal, Dolezal came along, 
and did her whole blackfish thing, you know, did the whole thing and pretended to be a black, uh, she felt that she was a black woman, right? And she moved in those spaces. Did, did I want her job? No, I didn't want her job. I didn't want anything she had, but it was irritating, right? So it irritated a lot of black women. Black people were like, how dare you? you? You don't know how it really feels. You can put the braids in and color your skin and do the surface, the, the, um, the superficial things, but you're not, a, you're not a black woman. I think it's a little bit similar, although I'm not comparing the history of black people with trans. Please get that out of y'all's mind, not you guys, but please know that I'm not minimizing. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But it kind of feels like that. That's the best way I can explain it. You know what I mean? And it's like, when we speak on it, we have transgender women, which were born male, telling us to shut, like, no, you don't have it right. And you don't own this and you don't own the women experience. And it feels like you're still, we look at you still in, in biological male telling us how we should feel. Let us vent, let us feel. We are seeing our rights being, put. It's, it's, I think the timing also, it also coincides, I know we're going late, it all coincides with us losing rights with abortion, losing rights with this, losing rights with that. And then on top of all of that, we have the saucy Santanas telling us we learned womanhood from y'all. We have men that are, he's not, I don't think he's, he's not transgender, mm -hmm. telling us about what we started. And it's frustrating because we're also torn because a lot of us have love. A lot of the transgender women are our sons, our daughters, our sisters, our, you know what I mean? So it's like a very complicated thing where we're like, I, I feel, no, but I love her. I don't want you guys to be mean to her and, and you, you know, toxic men to be mean to them. But can we find that happy medium where we're allowed to feel away and not told to shut the fuck up? You don't know what you're doing and what you're feeling and you don't own womanhood. It's unbelievable how it feels. And I, I don't know if I'm accurately, I'm, I'm doing a good job of vocalizing this because I didn't put anything aside. To, to, I wasn't really like, I didn't prepare a speech. I'm just speaking from the heart, y'all. If I could, that's the closest thing I can say to how it may feel for some women. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. no, that, Go ahead that, and tear me a new me, one. No, that, that helped me understand it. The, the, the comparison you drew did help me understand, but we got to go to commercial. But, but I don't think any trans women are taking anything from me. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things are being taken from women as we speak. Coming up, Young Miami shares her thoughts on mental illness regarding Carly Russell. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You know, my producer Justin just reminded me of a time that we talked, we had some transgender women on uh, Out Loud and it really left us talking about how we should do a, a town hall with black, cisgender, natural born women and transgender women and maybe even some trans men. I, I think we should just have a conversation and get everyone's feelings talked about, but also as Q suggested, have a licensed expert in the field so it's not just feelings. And it's, I, so, I it, it's so funny you say that my friend Lamo, who's watching, actually just sent me over a referral of a queer psychologist that, that specializes in this space. So Lamo, thanks for that. I'm going to pass it on to production. And maybe Dr. we should Ebony. make this We're going to do it. Yeah, Dr. Gonna, Ebony. Ebony. Uh-huh, Dr. Ebony. We're going to put speak this into existence. I'm only saying it on air so it gets done, so we can, like, we're committing to this. I, I, I want this to happen because I feel like it's gotten really ugly this week. And I just want to add one more thing to that conversation. Um, the cis term. I know people say it's a scientific term and it very well, maybe I think it is. It is right. If we're asking to not be called that because we don't like it, please respect that as you want us to respect your pronouns and to respect and not to misgender you all as well. It's the same thing for us. I don't care if it's a scientific term. We don't like it. If we don't like it, there's probably some scientific terms that we could all be called that we don't like. I don't like it. And I don't want to be called that. So I think a lot of women are saying they're agreeing with me in the chat with that. All right, we're going to get this done. Let me, get, we spent enough time on that. Young Miami recently shared her thoughts on the Carly Russell story. She tweeted, thank you at See the God. Everything is not mental illness. Some people will do anything for attention. I don't see mental illness in it at all in this Carly case. What are your thoughts on her tweet, Al? Um, <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> I don't know. I still think that there's a, there's a mental health aspect anyone that goes out of their way to create a stunt like that to do all the research that they did to pull off a stunt like that lets me know that something in their mental health state or status or their levels are not even okay i agree q 
Um, she's absolutely right. I mean, what she said piggybacks off of what I said. There ain't no damn mental illness. Uh, Carly had her ass whooped, and she need to go to jail. <laughs> I like a young Miami. I really do. I do too. I, I really enjoy her, young Miami. I want you to come on the show one day and, and fuck. Come fuck with us, young Miami. You enjoy her for the same reason you enjoy me. We cut from the same cloth. We're from Miami. We just <laughs> just give it to you like it is. She's she's cute, and I like her personality. And I love I, I love I agree with what she said and what you guys are saying. Um, stop giving cover to idiocracy, idiots, dumbasses, jackasses, dumb hoes, stupid bitches, dumb men, goofballs. And saying it's mental illness, you're insulting people that actually really have real conditions. Some people are just goofy as fuck and stupid. And it's a lazy out. It is. You're right. Oh, I did something wrong. I got mental illness. Oh, I'm stressed. Oh, oh, this I didn't take my HDAD medicine. Like, no. This show went by this fast? It's already yes, we done. Oh my God. We done went in so much. Yeah, I'm we sorry. Had a good show Funky Dineva and Al Reynolds for being awesome and Funky's little muscles for making a guest appearance on the show. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Inside the Black Box. We'll see y'all back here tomorrow. And please send us some um, uh, suggestions for what the Florida. I've been enjoying reading the stories about Florida. Y'all been getting them to you guys? I have been getting them. I have been getting them a lot. Mm -hmm. There's so many that we don't even get to all of them, right, Al? I know, right? <laughs> that just goes to but we know we're gonna make a trip to, uh, to florida and try to avoid them cocaine sharks we'll see y'all back here tomorrow bye soulmates <laughs>